project was thinking with kind of the end in mind here, the end product that we wanted to produce was an actual miniature golf course in our classroom. Um, and of course, in order to get there, we actually had to learn some different content to allow us to um, not only just build the miniature golf course, but also have a strategy about which how to get a hole in one. So we had to figure out several kind of benchmarks along the way of what we needed to accomplish and what content we needed to learn to be able to produce this miniature golf course in the classroom. So one thing along the way that we had to do was be able to incorporate that back into congruence. So we've been talking about what congruence means, specifically used in sufficient conditions for congruent triangles. We had to build that piece in, um, but also we looked at it in terms of transformations. Um, so the connection was there, we went from congruence, and then we talked about congruence preserving transformations. First transformation was reflection and how uh, when you reflect an object across the line of symmetry, you end up with a congruent object. The reflections would allow them to find the path of the ball that would be needed to get the hole in one. Um, so it wasn't just a matter of putting together different holes and testing to see where that hole in one would be. They actually had to um, show through you know, drawings, through diagrams, through you know, video or pictures of their different holes that they created that they actually um, knew exactly where that rebound needed to be. So most of the students, when they were going through, we had several of them actually, that, of course, that did the, the minimum requirement, but then we had a couple of the groups that chose to, to do three or four reflections, which of course was even more difficult in terms of performing the reflections to show what their path of the ball would need to be when they're performing three or four or five reflections even. Um, so some of them took on that little bit of extra, you know, work or in terms of thinking and thinking through the different steps there um, for the course that they actually built. A lot of the different students went about it in different ways too, which was what I enjoyed seeing. Some of them started from the, you know, the pencil and paper and they wanted to draw out their diagrams at first and draw out what their hole looked like and what materials that they would need, tables, two by fours, bricks, whatever we could find to rebound something off of. When I did the testing of the different types of golf balls we were going to use, um, I soon found out that not all of the golf balls um, worked as I thought that they would. So we had to test several different types. We went through tennis balls, racquetballs, bouncy balls, golf balls. I had students bring in different types of balls that we didn't have and we tested those different ones. So altogether each group actually tested probably seven or eight different types of balls and then they had to then justify and show why the ball they chose was the best one to be used for the course um, through some video analysis, through actually going through and measuring digitally with um, their iPads what those um, angles of incidence, the angle of reflection was going to be. You want to have your follow-up questions of how you can help out students get to that, make that connection that you're wanting to make between the content and whatever that project is. So I think that foundation has to be there. And I think I had that foundation in the beginning. I knew what it was of the content of what I wanted to uh, communicate to the students. Um, but in terms of how that looked and how that was going to play out through the several class periods we were working on, it changed throughout the process and it had to adapt just because the way I thought it was going to work maybe didn't work as well and we found a better way to do it.